All right, so in this video, we're going to preview the Transpiration Lab, which is Investigation 11 in the new lab manual. And uh, our, what our, really our goal is in this investigation is just to determine whether different weather conditions can affect how plants transpire. When plants transpire, they're losing water through their leaves, um, and we want to know if, if the rate that they lose that water is affected by the weather conditions around them. So um, we're just going to use a very simple whole plant model. So um, we're going to work with pansies, um, like the pansy in front of me. And there's a very simple way that we can measure the, how much this, these pansies transpire over the course of a week. Um, we're simply going to measure how much mass they lose. Um, if we really try to prevent other factors that affect mass from affecting our plant, then the transpiration rate will just be the, the mass of water they lose through their little root bulb um, as water exits the, the pores called stomata of their leaves. So we're just going to measure transpiration as mass loss of the entire plant model. So like I said, if we're going to do that, we just need to prevent any other factors that could cause this plant model to change in mass. So let's maybe discuss those. Um, could the plant grow um, and, and gain mass uh, uh, to some extent that would throw off our, our calculations? Um, the answer is hopefully not in the course of a week, um, especially if these pansy plants are already somewhat mature. Um, but we can um, perhaps uh, best keep that in check by pinching off um, where they grow. Um, especially flowers tend to grow in pretty fast, so we're going to pinch off the flowers at the, at the base of the stem. I know that seems really mean, but they, they'll eventually grow back. Um, so we want to pinch off any buds that look like they could become future flowers. Um, and um, just pinch off any top areas where the plant might be doing significant growth. So if we pinch off the buds, then they will not be gaining mass due to plant growth significantly. Um, there's another potential for um, uh, gaining mass throughout the course of the week, and especially if you choose to put your plant, say, in a high humidity environment, maybe where we spray a bunch of misty water around the plants, um, and, and some of that liquid water collects on the bottom of the bag. Um, you're going to want to really make sure you get water off of the uh, plastic bag before you mass it so that we can really see what the mass of the plant inside the bag is. So just be careful if you're working with um, humidity. There are also some potentials for um, other things that would cause loss of mass other than transpiration. Um, what if clumps of dirt just fall off? Um, so what we're going to try to do to prevent that is obviously to put our plant model in a plastic bag. So even if the dirt does dislodge a little bit, it's still going to um, be in our pla uh, overall plastic bag that, that's measured when we put it on the balance. Um, there's another potential for um, water leaving, but not through transpiration. So when we put it in the plastic bag, you can see here that I've kind of tied some string so that the plastic bag really kind of hugs the stem tightly. What we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent water from leaving the root bulb just through simple evaporation. Um, I don't want to know the rate of evaporation out of the soil. Um, I'm hoping that if I seal that off as well as possible, the only route out of the plant for the water will be through the leaves through transpiration. So the other major problem we could encounter just by doing mass loss is there's really no way to hold plant size constant um, um, right off the bat. So I might just have pansy plants that are way different in size. Maybe one plant has way more leaves than another, and you would expect a bigger plant with more leaves just to transpire more and lose more mass. So I just gave you a sample data table here that shows maybe two plants that we've put in the same weather environment, and yet they clearly show different changes in mass. So how can we deal with that, that issue? Um, what we're going to try and do is we're going to, um, at the end of the week, estimate the total amount of leaf surface area on each of our plants. So if we can um, figure out how much mass they lost, but then make it a ratio of how much water they lost in mass relative to their surface area of leaves, um, then we can estimate how much water they lost per unit surface area of leaf 
um, and, and that will sort of hold plant size constant. And I'm going to try and walk you through an example so that you can see that. How are we actually going to estimate the surface area of leaves on each plant? Um, we're just actually going to take all of the leaves off the plant. We're going to pinch the leaves off as well. That's going to leave the plant looking really sad, but the leaves will actually grow back, so don't worry about the pansy. Um, and we're going to mass the leaves, and then we're going to try and do a simple conversion to estimate based on how much mass of leaves there are, um, maybe how much surface area those leaves cover. So let's assume that we've done that. We'll talk more about exactly how we're going to get these numbers for surface area in class. Um, but let's say that, um, for example, it, it's pretty clear that my plant A is a smaller plant. It transpired less over the course of the week. Um, but that's because it had a much lower surface area of total leaf um, space. So um, if we make it a ratio, so um, what we're suggesting is to equalize size, we can sort of take um, the, the amount they transpired, 57.6 in the case of this plant, and just divide it by the surface area. Um, so 57.6 grams of water lost divided by 240 centimeters squared of leaf. Um, what does that tell us if we divide out those numbers? That would tell us how much water transpired out of a little one by one centimeter square of that leaf. Um, and when I put this in my calculator, I get that maybe 0 0.24 grams of water left every single cent square centimeter of leaf in that plant. Um, if I do that with my plant below, um, that I sort of stipulated was in the same weather environment, um, so what if I do 88.06 over 370? Um, 88.06 grams and 370 centimeters squared. Um, that actually comes out to 0 0.238 grams per centimeter squared. So in other words, once you sort of make a ratio of water loss per unit surface area of the plant, um, we're no longer comparing plants that are of completely different size. We're, we're then just estimating, okay, in a given square centimeter of that leaf, how much water did it lose? I, I hope you can see that that sort of um, um, eliminates the problem of, of there, ha there being different sizes of different plants. If there's a different rate of water loss per square centimeter, we can sort of infer that, that that difference must be due to the weather environment, not due to it being just a different size plant. So that's it, really. Um, um, that's all we're going to um, consider for this lab. We're trying to figure out if weather conditions affect how fast plants transpire. So we're interested in the transpiration rate, ultimately. Um, and we should be able, if we um, think about all of the other factors that could cause our plants to change in mass and try and eliminate those changes from occurring, we should just be able to measure transpiration as the rate of mass loss of our plants over the course of the week.